Hi, my name's Stephen, and in this video, we are going to look at Minecraft Education Edition and its application to the technologies learning area of the Australian curriculum. As I'm sure you know, Minecraft is a game where students can break blocks, place them and build whatever they can imagine. And in the Education Edition, we can take that imaginative world and bring it to all of the curriculum areas. And as we look at technologies today, we are going to see that it integrates really well with a lot of the other curriculum areas. So we'll look at some resources for technologies, but also think about how you can use the subject content and thinking principles of technologies as you approach cross-curricular activities as well. So let's first of all look at the technologies learning area. In the Australian curriculum, technologies is split into two distinct but connected learning areas. We've got design and technologies, which is all about uh, engineering principles and systems. So how forces can create light, sound, heat, etc. And there's some great opportunities to explore that in Minecraft. We also look at food and fiber production. So things such as farming and sustainability. Again, loads of lesson plans and worlds where you can farm and create sustainable futures. Thirdly, we look at food specialization, such as properties of food, nutrition and food safety. And there's a lot of links there with health and physical education. And then finally, we look at materials and technology specifications, such as electronics, woodwork, fashion, those sorts of things. Then we come on to the digital technology strand down the bottom of this image. And in here, we're looking at digital systems, hardware, software, um, representation and interpretation of data, computational thinking, and how we can use visual programming to build solutions to problems. Across both of the technologies areas, we're looking at investigating and defining, generating and designing, producing and implementing, evaluating and collaborating. These are all things that we want to promote and encourage as we create, build and share worlds within Minecraft. First of all today, we're going to look at Code Builder. This is a huge part of the Education Edition version of Minecraft. With Code Builder, you can get assistance for all the things that you might want to do in Minecraft, and you can create solutions by coding. You can build houses, you can mine, you can farm, and a lot more. I've just highlighted a few of the ways in which you can use Code Builder at different age ranges within the Australian curriculum. So first of all, from foundations to year two, you can do some really simple coding about following instructions. So you can put a simple code, like the one on the screen here, that places a few flowers down as you walk around in the game. As you get more into the programming, you can do things like um, explore algorithms in year three and four. You can solve problems with iteration and loops in year five and six. When you move on to year seven and eight in high school, we generally move from block-based coding into text-based programming. So if we're looking at conditionals, we can do that with blocks, sure, but we can easily toggle between blocks and text-based languages, such as uh, JavaScript and Python are the two um, programming languages that are built into uh, My Minecraft Education Edition. So loads of ways in which we can use Code Builder in the technologies curriculum. Let's go and have a look at Code Builder inside Minecraft Education Edition. Here we go. Okay, here I am in Minecraft Education Edition. I'm just gonna change my, my costume. There are some developer skin packs so you can dress more like a coder. There we go. That's the uh, official coding uniform. Now I am just going to resume my game. I am in a, a blank world. This is called the blocks of grass template. There's no particular biome, so you haven't got uh, any trees or 
lakes or mountains. You've just got a flat plane where you can do your building or your coding. Oh, there's a few animals around. That's about it. So to launch Code Builder, you just press C on your keyboard if you're using a keyboard and mouse. Or if you're using touch, you'll see a little robot character at the top. That's your agent. You can just click on that and that will launch Code Builder. I was obviously doing some coding earlier. I'm going to click home and go back to my home page. When you first launch Code Builder, you can choose Make Code, Python, or Tinker. Now, I generally use Make Code because it allows me to use block based coding, which is great for primary schools, or I could use Python, which is most common in the high schools that I've been working with. So I'm going to go into Microsoft Make Code, and what you'll see are previous projects that I've been working on. You'll find some tutorials and some examples, as well as, if I scroll down, uh, some videos showing you how to uh, use block-based coding and Python. And these are great for students to, to watch and explore and, and learn how to, how to get started with programming. But I'm just going to show you a couple of the uh, simple things that you can get started with before we go in and look at some of the lesson plans. So I'm going to go into New Project. And I'll just call this uh, test one. So with even with really young students, I'm just going to clear these out of the way. You can pick them up and drop them in the bin. This kind of shelf here will turn into a bin as you drag things there. So I'm going to click on basic and uh, on player walk. So a really simple one you can introduce to young students is as the player walks along, place a block where you're walking. And that block can be a grass block, a sapling, uh, a tulip, or whatever you want. And really simple code, this is just gonna place it no blocks away from me. These are the coordinates uh, relative to me. So now if I go into the game and I walk around, ah, let's turn around so I can see. There we go, I'm leaving a trail of tulips while I walk. There we go. You'll notice that if I double tap and fly, I'm not leaving a trail of tulips because I haven't coded the program to say when I fly. What I could do is change that or right click and duplicate that and say on player walk or swim or fall or climb or fly. And I could change that to something else like cobwebs. So now when I fly, I'll leave a trail of cobwebs. Oh, I'm still walking. Now if I fly, you'll see I'm leaving a trail of cobwebs. So that's a real simple introduction to coding that you can get started with with um, younger students just on player walk. Okay. Next, you might want to introduce some code that actually changes your world. So a common one and one that I love, and I've, I use this a lot when I introduce coding in Minecraft, is making it rain chickens. So I'm going to spawn a, an animal, and I'm going to spawn a chicken. And these coordinates are relative to me. So 10 on, in the Y coordinate would be 10 blocks above my head. Now you'll see that this is cross-hatched cross -hatched out and that is because I, it's not actually um, working. I've got to give it a command. So it could be on a chat command, it could be when I walk, um, or it could be something else. But if I just say on chat command rain, what will happen now is when I type in the word rain, a chicken is going to fall 10 blocks from above me. But I don't just want one chicken. I want 100 chickens. So I get a loop. And I can change that to 100. And now when I type in the word rain, 100 chickens are going to fall. I could change the 
animal. I could change the coordinates and, and experiment and see what happens. But let's just see what happens when I type T and then rain. As I look up, well, there's all the chickens. Fantastic. How many? I'm not going to count them, but I expect there's a hundred because that's what I have programmed. Oh, a couple of them have got caught on the cobwebs. Now, if I go back to my code, I could play around with this. I could um, have a look at different blocks, see what could be brought in. You'll notice they're color coded. So all the blocks ones are green. Anything to do with mobs or animals or players will be in purple. The agent we're going to look at next is in red and so on. Now, I can easily switch from my block-based coding to either JavaScript or Python. So there's a couple of reasons why I might do that. If I'm following the Australian curriculum, when I come to year seven, I need to use a text-based programming language. And one of the most common ones is Python in Australia. So I can actually go into my code in Python and try and work out what's happening. Okay, so I can come in here and I can change the position. I can even change the animal. If I delete chicken and start typing, it'll come up with different animals that I can choose, like a bat. And what you'll notice is even with younger students, they find that it's quicker to change the text than it is to delete and change and bring in another block. So you can really introduce the text-based programming with uh, students younger than year seven as well. I can then switch back to the uh, blocks once I've changed that and I can see that um, the bat is selected there. If you make too many changes or get too advanced in the text-based coding and there isn't a corresponding block, um, you won't be able to switch back to the blocks. But there's a nice way to switch between the two. Okay, I'm just going to close that down and introduce you to... Can't see where he's gone now. Somewhere over there. There he is. My agent. So when I press C or I um, choose a Code Builder from my touch base menu at the top, you can see there's my agent. Stephen P. Agent. Um, and I can actually program or code my agent to do things for me within the game. So I could code the agent to build. I could code the agent to inspect different blocks and have different behaviors depending on what the type of block is. I can program my agent to mine for me or to farm for me um, and lots more besides. So I'm just going to do a couple of really simple things to give you an introduction to um, to manipulating the agents. So if I go into Code Builder here, we'll remove this code for now, and I'm gonna hit up Agent, here we go. So I can teleport the agent to me. That might be useful if the agents uh, uh, got lost, <laughs> or I've uh, traveled too far away from him. Bringing him to me just with just with that block will, could be quite useful. Um, let's do something simple. Let's try and um, program the agent to uh, build a, a square for me. So I'm going to go into blocks. Uh, sorry, no, I'm not. I'm going to go into agent and I'm going to uh, have the agent move in a square. So he's going to move forward by three. Then he's going to turn left and he's going to do that four times. So let's put all of that in there and I'll give him a command on chat command square. Okay, so the agent's going to teleport to me, and he's going to do this four times. Excellent. So T, and I'll type in square. Oh, and he teleported to me, and he, oh, he walked in a square, but he didn't build. So if I want the agent to build, I've either got to code him to have blocks to build with, or I can go and get blocks and give those blocks to him because my agent actually has its own inventory. So now I can go back to the code builder and I can actually say agent place on move. And what this means is as he moves, if I make that true, the agent will actually place as he moves. 
Okay, let's try it now. Oh! He couldn't place because I was in the way. Okay. There we go. Maybe I need to play around with it. So there we go. We've made a little uh, block uh, code for him. But if I go into the code, um, I could add to this code to make him build a tower. Um, or maybe I could be more advanced and make him build a house or a, um, a particular structure. And you can have that repeated. So you can put... Um, loops inside loops uh, and you can get some really great um, things happening. If I go back to the code builder here you'll notice that there are tutorials and there's agent oh so there's the tower that we were looking at just now or we were building the base of the tower. We can open an example in blocks python or javascript so here's actually the code to build a tower and we're actually setting um, a particular block to be in his inventory. So rather than me giving him items, you can actually code those items to magically appear. And there's also a code here that says agent destroy ob obstacles. So if there's something in the way, he doesn't just get confused and not do anything. He'll actually destroy what's there before he places that down. So if I write the word tower now, let me be standing on the floor and I'm gonna write tower now my agent is building my tower and you'll see that, that he he destroyed the uh, wooden blocks and he's building with the stone blocks. Okay, so there's a whole lot of um, examples that you can take and adapt and that's one of the great things about coding is that you can go into the coding and you can play around with the blocks you can play around with the iterations what if he wants uh, um, it taller or wider or a different type of block those are all things that you can experiment with and just as before you might find that quicker if you go into the Python and change the text so there's plenty to explore within the uh, code builder. You can even um, import directly from the web. So there's a whole lot of examples on the web that you can um, import. And you can e even export um, make code files and share them with students. And students can share them with staff members. We're going to see later on um, a whole lot of resources where you've got worked examples and solutions that you can import and run in your game. So this is a very quick overview of Code Builder. Now we're going to go and look at some of the worlds and some of the lessons that have been created to support the digital technologies curriculum in Minecraft Education Edition. Okay, so I'll go back to the main menu. And if I go into view library, this is where there's a whole lot of ready-made worlds. If I go into biomes and worlds, and biomes, you'll find that blocks of grass world I just showed you. That can be quite useful uh, if you're practicing coding to build or to farm, or you may want to go and explore another biome. If I go into the subject kits, this is where I can actually find ready-made lessons and worlds for all different curriculum areas. So for digital technologies, we'll go into computer science. And there's a few different things here. Hour of Code are wonderful resources. Uh, each year, the Minecraft team make a new challenge. And these are great. Uh, you can introduce them to students of all ages. Last year's one is the most recent, was about inclusion. So there were two, um, two villages who were neighbors, but they, they didn't really get on. And this world is all about trying to show how the different worlds can uh, come together by teaching and learning in Minecraft. If I click lesson plan, it will take me to the Hour of Code lesson plan and some additional resources so that you can extend or adapt the lesson. So you can see it's a beginner lesson. Those are the learning objectives. So it talks about diversity and inclusion, bias, and then we're using coding 
to um, solve the problems in the game. So there's teacher prep that you can read through. There's a, an intro video. Then there's uh, student activities. It's a good idea to read this through before you use with students. You can open the world directly from this website as well as from within the game. And you can also share or assign this activity. So this can be really useful if you are using Microsoft Teams, for example. You can just click Teams and you can either share this to a channel or create an assignment directly from the uh, lesson plan page. So that's a really useful tool. So do check this one out. Um, I'm just going to go back into the world here and I'm just going to create the world. Okay, so even if I haven't read the lesson plan, I figure that I just need to read this. So this is a tale of two villages, so that gives me some instructions. So we've got some prompts around the game. I'll just go really quickly, then I'm going to go and check to the caretaker. Then I choose whether I'm going to code in blocks or Python. So maybe blocks with younger students, Python with um, high school students. And then away we go. So you can see the instructions on the, on the screen. Press C to code. My agent's popped up here. And I've got a nice simple um, bit of code to start with. Okay, let move the agent onto the gold block. There we go. I just want him to move forward by one. Oh, so close. Let me try again. Ah, oh, I need to move forward by four. Okay, so maybe I uh, read the instructions and I can get some hints as well. So really nice structured activity. And also what I like here is that you don't have any of the blocks that you don't need. You only get what you need. So it's a nice little activity. Um, hour of code. You might find you go through it a little bit quicker with older students or students who are super used to using uh, code in Minecraft. I'm just going to come out of there, exit the lesson, and go back to the subject kits and computer science. So there's the hour of code. Then you've got some block-based coding activities. So these are ones that introduce the most um, fundamental aspects of coding, whether you're using a keyboard and mouse or whether you're using a touch screen like a, a Surface or an iPad. So some really nice activities here. This one here, uh, computing with Minecraft, I'm going to show you later on um, a really nice uh, one notebook that goes along with this where you've got lesson plans, teacher workbooks and student workbooks as well as all of the work solutions. So these actually tie in with a, um, a whole curriculum plan. So again, we can go to the lesson plan and, uh, and read all about it. There's a whole lot of um, guides and PowerPoints and, and other things that you can download directly from there. So you can come in and explore the ready-made worlds. Uh, Python 101, this is really great. It introduces you to all of the different aspects of uh, coding in Python. There's a whole load of structured lessons that you can pick up and have your students work through. Then if I go into featured lessons, these are some of the Minecraft education team's favorite. These are all uh, ready-made lessons that you can pick up and start using. Uh, Museum Heist is another fantastic beginner lesson. Um, this is based on the Wonder Woman film that came out last year but do it do explore these try them out and the great thing about all of these is that these are just starting points you can take these you can extend them you can use them in other curriculum areas as well so you can explore all these from within the subject kits but what you can also do is access these and more via the Minecraft education website. So let me just bring that up. If I go to the home page, 
and I go to teach with Minecraft, you can explore the lessons. And again, the subject kits are here, but you get a bit more information uh, on the website than from within the game. So if I click on computer science, you can see there's 150 hours of lessons from beginner to intermediate to advanced. And there's a nice little um, kind of chart here showing how the different um, packs progress. So I talked about the hour of code just now, the coding with Minecraft, then you've got the tutorials, and then the Python for the more advanced um, users. So these are ones that have been recommended to get started with. And then as we scroll down, You've got the computing with Minecraft one that I mentioned and a whole lot of uh, tutorials. So loads and loads of resources. Just go to teach with Minecraft, explore lessons and go into the computer science um, resource kit. To go along with the computing with Minecraft course, there is a whole lot of resources available in OneNote. I've put the link in the description below. That will, if you click on the link, it will copy it into your own OneDrive. So this is split into the different units the first one uh, the unit agency goes through a number of lessons about coding your agent teleporting your agent so there's worked examples there's teacher questions there's unplugged activities as well so it's not all done on a computer in minecraft there's a lot of uh, moving around work on paper and so on so we're planning a city in this um, series of lessons we're building parks how to code a park fence how to code a water feature. So loads of really nice resources here. And all of the materials you need are available. You can download Word documents for the teacher and the, the student, as well as PowerPoints and Minecraft worlds. So it takes you through a whole lot of resources. You can download all of these at the link in the description. This is one that's generally for upper primary. And we have this activity or this series of lessons for um, lower secondary. This is the computer science course that talks about um, all of the different concepts. So events, coordinates, variables, and again, there's teacher workbooks, teacher PowerPoints that you can download and use with your students. So the idea is in this series of lessons is that you introduce your students to different concepts in computer science, conditionals, functions, etc. And then they come up with a final project. And then you've got um, a whole lot of resources you can use as well. The link for both of these one notebooks is in the description below. Of course, the digital technologies curriculum is not all about coding. And as we've seen from some of these resources, the computer science curriculum in the US is also not just about coding. It is about using computational thinking, information systems and data to define, design and implement digital solutions exactly as it is in the Australian curriculum. So please check out these activities that I've mentioned. You'll find lots of ideas that support the Australian curriculum digital technologies. And also, they can be used in cross-curricular projects. So do check it out. Now let's have a look at design and technologies. Art and design, and we can have a look at engineering and find lots of ways that students use design thinking to generate and produce solutions for authentic needs and opportunities. So let's just look at a few lessons that I found useful for teaching the design and technologies curriculum. I'm at the Minecraft Education Edition homepage at education.minecraft.net. There's plenty of resources here so you can get started, you can connect with other educators, you can explore the resources. And then there's a blog which contains stories from right across the world where teachers are using Minecraft in their classroom. So plenty to explore. We want to go and find some lesson ideas. So we go to Teach with Minecraft, Explore Lessons, and we can explore the subject kits. If there's not a subject kit that appeals or is relevant to us, we can actually search by keyword.
So I'm just going to show you a few resources that I've picked up that I've used with design and technologies lessons. First of all, uh, Redstone and Sustainable Living. So students are researching different businesses and then building with Redstone in Minecraft. Redstone is the kind of engineering heart of Minecraft. You can use Redstone. It's kind of like electricity. So you can make power and heat and light. And as ever, there is a really nice guide course that teachers can work through to find out the basics of Redstone and how to apply it in teaching. Students will uh, probably be all across Redstone and they'll be doing some basic um, work to power up their house, but you can take that to the next level and show how you can use uh, solar power and wind power and harness that to build a sustainable future. So we can look at architecture and there's a really nice lesson here where students use um, different types of architecture from classical, medieval, Asian, modern, and so on. And they design and then build in a particular architectural design. One of the uh, really nice parts of Minecraft that I find useful is the uh, farming. So you can actually co code an agent to um, plow a field and plant some seeds and then harvest those seeds. So there's a nice activity here that students can do. And if you search for food under um, the lesson plan search, you'll find a whole lot of lessons on building a healthy food village, um, looking at the path food takes from the farm to the plate. There's a really nice um, activity where you can go and explore sustainable food production. And again, they've all got the same structure, so you can see if there's any teacher prep needed, what the guiding ideas are and what the student activities are. Download lesson plans. Um, and then there's a whole lot of designing ideas. There's designing an apartment, designing a school, designing a city. And these are things that you can pick up and use straight away. Here's one about building bridges and tunnels to connect different sides of the world. So you can take an existing world and build on it. And because we are talking in the technologies curriculum, we could bring in design technology and digital technologies together and code a solution. We can use digital technologies to solve a design problem. Another one is the uh, garden design project. So this is using design along with maths. So there's plenty of activities. Just come onto the Minecraft Education Edition, search for keywords, and, and you'll be um, given lots of opportunities to explore these worlds and lessons. Well, hi, I'm with uh, with Stuart from Mercy College. Do you want to just introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do? Yep, sure. So my name's Stuart. I work at Mercy College. I'm the Innovations and Communications Manager, uh, also teaching digital technologies um, through pre-primary to year six, but I have also taught um, year seven to year 10 digital technologies. Um, and I'm currently providing professional development to staff too on how to integrate technologies into their, their teaching and learning programs and in particular Minecraft at the moment is the focus. So yeah. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for that. So um, you mentioned digital tech. So what sort of things have you been doing with um, with primary and which, which age groups this year? This year, um, so I guess I'll start from pre-primary to year two. We've been looking at the pre-primary have really been looking at the the devices themselves so they've been using ipads and how to how to use those and and correctly and whatnot and safe safe use um and we've also uh, i've integrated or started sorry implementing programming into that with the pre-primary so they started looking at daisy the dinosaur as a yeah, way yeah. of introducing and that i, I kind of spread that across um year pre-primary to year two at the moment because i don't teach year threes until next semester um as an introduction to computer programming. Uh, with the fours, fives and sixes, I started with Scratch as a, an introduction to computer programming, as well as the Lego Mindstorm um, uh, platform with robotics. And we've now moved into Microsoft using 
at Microsoft Mine, uh, Minecraft using mines, uh, sorry, make code and and just, just exploring the, the use of Minecraft and, and coding. So yeah, that's how I've started with the this year. <laughs> Excellent. So have you used any um, prepared resources from, from the Minecraft team or any of the tutorials or have you just kind of looked at the concepts you've, you know and seen how you can apply them? Yeah, pretty much. I've just looked at the concept. I have gone through the resources that are provided um, and how that I could use or match those with some of the things that the teachers are teaching in their classroom. Um, but it's basically I'm looking at what the staff are teaching and how that can be used with Minecraft to kind of engage the students a bit more. And, be, and, and I guess part of the, our whole our, our direction of, or vision of learning is um, having the students creative or learning creatively and I thought Minecraft would be a really good option to, to make that happen uh, and the staff have been really uh, welcoming to it so far it's particularly in the year four to six area that's where my my main focus is with implementing Minecraft as a learning tool so yeah it's been good the kids are the kids are loving it the staff are loving it <laughs> Excellent. And um, so I guess for, from your point of view, you're just looking at the learning outcomes and how you can use Minecraft as a creative tool to reach those? Yeah, basically, yeah. So um, I don't know if you want an example of one I did last week with year fives was basically they were learning about collecting data in mathematics and, and presenting that data in bar graphs and other forms. So the students used Minecraft as a class. So we created a world together um and with that their goal was to collect data from students and they did that on their ipads initially through a tally graph or tallies um and then they presented that in a bar graph or um another form in the minecraft world so it was really cool to see we kind of opened it to them of how they could present that the results so some used blocks to um create their bar graph and then others used animals in Minecraft to group them with the number of kids. But the, the, one of the, I guess, the prerequisites we set for them is they had to have a sign placed out in front of their world, uh, sorry, their project, one with their name on it, and two, what each block or animal that they used represented in terms of the data. So if it was one chicken equals two students liked using this particular app. So yeah, that was it was really cool and the kids loved it. So <laughs> that sounds really great, Stuart. And how are you actually um sort of measuring or observing what they're doing? Are you getting screenshots or walking around and looking at them or what are you yeah, doing? I walk around or the teacher walks around and we take screenshots as well. Um we've just started using um I know that you can record through Microsoft through using I think it's their Xbox platform. Um you can screen record. So yeah, that's that's one other tool that we're using to to measure, I guess, and record what they're doing. But it's also still just over the shoulder, just walking around and over the shoulder um, observation. But the the great thing is there is that option now for for screenshots and and the students. The next task I'm doing with the year fours is a and and this is how I'm going to collect their data is. They, I've created a world with different tasks. So they're, they're learning, because our maths program is kind of in sync, they're also learning about collecting data and, and presenting that. So I've reshaped the lesson. And there's a, a world that I've created where the teachers are all inside there as, um, I think it's, is it NPCs or? Um, yeah, non-play characters. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So they, they are there as a character and they give the student a task and they've all got to go around this world and, and it will give them the different coordinates as well to meet the next teacher. As they go and build or complete each task, they need to take a screenshot or to, sorry, take a picture using the Minecraft camera and place that into the portfolio uh, with a bit of information on, yep, this is the task I completed. Here's the screenshot to, to show that I did this. And at the end, I'll export that and airdrop it to to the teacher so yeah I think that's a really cool feature that being able to do the portfolio add some camera pictures in there and then export it as a PDF document that was um, that was a big plus for the teaching staff they said if that wasn't there it would have them go you know you know can we use this how are we going to collect data on it so that was a big plus for the other teaching staff 
Okay, and the, the PDF that's generated is there, do you have a learning management system or is that shared through Teams or, or how shared do you? The four to five, six, four, fives and sixes will use Teams. They'll share that through Teams, yeah, because each class has their own Teams. Um, and I've also just provided some professional development to staff on how to use rubrics on Teams so they can actually assess it straight through Teams. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. That's fantastic. So is there anything currently um, in place or planned for uh, high school with digital tech? I know there's a lot lot that you can do there as well. Yeah. Uh, funnily, I, I was just speaking with the, um, the, the coordinator of digital technologies and I said, look, this is what I'm doing. Because I've worked with the secondary, I've come back down to primary. And I said, this is what I'm doing with the primary students. And, and last year, we used we did use Minecraft and they had to create a, a hotel purely with code. So they used Python um, and that was all with code. wasn't using Minecraft education, but it was using just the basic version of Minecraft. Oh, sorry, the, the non-education version. Yep. Uh, and I said, oh, this is great because <laughs> the kids were using Python, but the, the make code part, would have been a lot easier for them <laughs> because of the drag and drop blocks, but also with the option of seeing the code, because of that, I guess, kind of differentiates the curriculum because there will be students who aren't, you know, familiar with programming or don't grasp the concept as easily as some of the extended students who can just go, right, I can type this up in Python, whereas that block version is available for the, the students who quite can't quite grasp that concept. So it was really good. Um, so, yeah, he's looking at trying to implement that up into the seven and nine program next next uh, semester, hopefully. <laughs> Excellent. That that sounds really, really good. Yeah. Um, so I think I'd just like to know if you had any advice for someone who's who's new to using Minecraft, specifically with digital tech. How would how would you suggest they, they get started? Um, I guess how I got started was just. I started with small tasks uh, and just letting the kids, not too much of the coding aspect in it, but with make code at the start, letting the kids be creative in the world while linking it to what your your task is, small tasks. And then what I've done is I've gradually grown and said, okay, well, part of this task is that you are going to, uh, say, for example, we, we started creating a, a community and, and I had my centre classroom in the middle. The kids had their little dorms um, that attached to this community. And I said, part of it, I want to see some um, code that's been used um, with make code. Um, and then as I've got, as the kids have developed and the staff, as they've got better with, the, you know, understanding how it works, then you set bigger tasks, if that makes sense, to the students and the staff, because it's new to them as well. Um, but it's about having a play too, which is fun <laughs> because you can go home, really have a play. And, and on the Minecraft uh, education site, there's heaps of um, tutorials that are really clear on, on what to do and how to use, it, especially with those NPCs. I never, I didn't think, I didn't know they existed. Um, and they, they are actually really handy to, to place around um, your world and give the students tasks, I guess you could say, as well as uh, links to websites that might provide further information to your task. Yeah, so it's just start small, <laughs> I guess is my advice. And then as you become more confident and the students are more confident, start extending. That, that would be my advice. That is very good advice. Thank you very much, Stuart. And well, thanks for chatting with me today. No, not a problem. Too easy. If you want to find out more about using Minecraft Education Edition in your classroom. Check out the Minecraft Education website. We've been there a few times today at education.minecraft.net. We also have a page specifically for teachers in Australia. So check this out. You'll find links to Australian curriculum links as well as uh, global mentors that are based in Australia and some really good lessons that you can start off with in your classroom. If you want to go and find out more and become really equipped to teach with Education Edition Minecraft in your classroom, check out this 11-hour course. You'll find out all about playing the game, managing, assessing, and you'll pick up lots of great tips. Thank you for watching this video about the technologies curriculum. 
in Australia. I hope you've picked up some ideas. Good luck in your classroom. <laughs>